Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel and it's for our shadow. That's what happens when you're married to a producer. Everything is on the beat. Okay, hello people and welcome back to my channel. My name is Fola Shadi Esther and I talk about my faith, marriage, health, lifestyle. Do join us if that's what you're interested in. Be a part of our growing family and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you. From the title, you guys already know what we are here to talk about and I'm sure most of you are here for the gist, the hot, hot gist and I'm going to be dishing it out as to the hot. And the title is that my husband was not my spec. Yes! Yes! You know, um, in the past few years, there was this trend of, oh, is this guy your spec? Is this guy your, in your class? Is this guy part of like what you want in a guy? You know, ladies writing a list of what they want. Well, I also had a list of what I wanted and I wrote them down, which is what we're going to be looking at today. So today, basically, I'm just going to be rating my husband according to my list and see if he actually met my qualifications <laughs> okay let's get right into it um before i go and disclaim um, i was one of those people who you know grew up watching disney channel and we always had this dream or imagination of how our prince charming will look like you know we want him to be tall dark handsome you know coming with his horse and chariot uh -huh. coming to sweep me off my feet oh. <laughs> 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 Okay, so funny <laughs> enough, it wasn't part of what I wrote in my list. So recently, I was just going through my list of what I wanted in a man, and I started realizing that hmm, I should probably do this on my YouTube channel where I read out the list, and together, those that know my husband more than I do because you know, I've only known him for a couple of years now, we can break him together. So please put it in the comment section if there's one part that you're like, mm, mm, mm. That part is still, is still growing, <laughs> no, it's still learning no, no, Oh yeah, no. you know, yeah, he, he checks that box. So let's see if my husband, Mr. Achipadu Abraham, checks my spec list boxes. If you get what I mean. For me, as a child of God, uh, obviously you know what my number one would be. Oh yeah, oh yeah, stop putting it down. Let's know what's it, what's it, what's it, tell me, tell me, tell me. Exactly. So my number one was a man that loves god understand god's love for him and loves me the same way okay so he loves god he understands how much god loves him and he loves me in the same way and the reason why this was very very particular to me was because the bible says that husband love your wives as christ loves the church now if this man do not really understand how christ loves the church how can he love me? Mm. You see what I'm saying there, yeah? So there was some, there's something that um, my husband and I were always talking about, like, even though and even if, like, love that is no, uh, that is not conditional. So it's like, even though they are like this, oh, I still love you. Even if you did this, I still love you. So we used to call it, like, even though and even if love. And I wanted that kind of love, an unconditional love, someone that truly understands what love means, because love is not emotion love is not the butterflies in your stomach love is deeper love is genuine and uh, if you want to know about love go and read my book <laughs> so definitely like it has to be a lover of god and a man that truly understand god's love for him and yes my husband he loves the lord he loves the lord <laughs> and he truly understands that love and he's able to show me that I love my God. I feel so right. <laughs> so yes, he checks that box. Number two is a man that is handy. And what I mean by that is a man that knows how to fix stuff around the house. So I feel like this part was um, shaped by me growing up to see my dad always fixing stuff around the house. So my dad is like, so I fix a lot. He fixes everything in the house. If the gen is spot, we'll go and fix it. Pumping machine is what we'll go and fix it. So my dad will first attempt to fix it, and then if he can't fix it, he will now call an expert in that field. And almost about 80% of the time, he's able to fix it. So like, 
I grew up wanting that for myself, for my home, for my family. Like, oh, it would be nice to marry a kind of man that, you know, knows how to fix stuff. And, you know, my man is just there sweating and fixing things. And I'm just drooling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <ego. laughs> so, um, I wanted that, that in a man. And, hmm. My husband. So, in that aspect, it's still coming up. As in, you know, what I'm trying to say, like, you know, um, you know, when you're building skills, you're still um, developing skills. So, uh, we're gonna say, <laughs> Nip. <laughs> you do not miss that part. <laughs> He did not miss it. He did not miss it at all. It, as in that part, said it was even a day. I think I, I don't know. I'm joking you, but I told him ah, it would be nice if you know how to fix stuff around your house. It doesn't matter. I was like, oh yeah, I know you know how to fix it. I know how to do this. Like, mm. Shasha, let's move to the next point. <laughs> we are in God's hands. <laughs> so one thing I've noticed about my husband is that he's someone who likes to delegate. He likes to um, push people out there. He likes to give tax to experts in the field and he sees it as a way of giving back to people giving back to that person so for example if you if you want to fix like a table in the house instead of my husband fixing it you think about it that okay which carpenter do i know that will benefit from this work that will benefit from the money that will give him to do this work and he's just going to call that person to come and fix it so that's like one of the gifts that i feel like god has given him to be able to push people out to encourage people to support people in whatever they're doing and uh, it would make sense why he's not really handy i mean he has hands but his hands are used for other things oh praise the lord <laughs> moving on okay the next one is a man that can lead himself and his family mm. And I put and I put in brackets independent but not self reliant. And what I meant about that by that is I wanted a man who was independent, a man that is not like ah oh, okay, we want to do this project. Should we ask mom? Should we ask daddy? What does mommy say? What is daddy? You know, uh, what would I call them? Baby, no, not baby mama. Mama's boy, yeah, mama's boy, or daddy's boy, or something. You know, I didn't want someone like that that cannot make a decision for himself. Don't get me wrong, there is um, wisdom in seeking counsel, yeah? But what I mean is that, be able to make decisions. I mean, as a man, I'm one who believes that the man is the head of the family, he's the one who leads the family. And if you cannot make basic decisions, like you have to involve third parties, fourth parties, hundred parties, just to make decisions, then it shows that you're not ready to get married. And by the grace of God, my husband... <laughs> <laughs> okay so number four and i put this in asterisks yep yeah? listen to it okay so it is a man that is convinced about his purpose and can clearly state it okay <laughs> shall i say that again a man that is convinced about his purpose and can clearly state it and then I put in brackets. I like brackets, just so you know. <laughs> I put in brackets, he knows where he's going. If you don't know your purpose, um, I don't see the purpose of us doing this this life or this marriage thing together, if you get what I mean. And I'm not trying to like impose on anyone, but I feel like before you say you want to marry someone, it's not just about I love you, it's not just about okay let's get married it's fun everyone is doing it okay let's do life together let's see where we're going no know where you're going first and there's this um illustration that pastor Lodge even used one time and it stuck with me she's like imagine you're on the main road and maybe you're going to nasarawa and then a car comes and the car says oh i'm going to bainley will you enter that car like oh yeah at least it's a car let's try follow you and then we'll see where we are going or we'll see maybe when i get to Benway, i'll not take a car to nasa no you don't have that because i'm not too good in geography but i believe that nasa should be in the north and Benway should probably be in the south correct me if i'm wrong okay 
you're going in two different directions you would not take that vehicle you would wait for the one that is going to your direction and that's how i see marriage that's how i see the journey called marriage because i don't believe marriage is a destination that's a story for another day but i believe that in this journey called marriage you need to follow someone that knows where it's going you need to go with someone who knows where it's going like that. so it's not like you don't know where you're going so it's like as a human being as a woman as a person i know where i'm going so you also have to know where you're going so that i'll ask okay are you going where i'm going no i'm not going in the same direction good day to you thank you very much uh, where we going? how about you are you going hey, where are you going <laughs> let's go of course that's not how that's not how it happened but the point is that i need to know where you're going and by god's grace i also want to see how our purposes and vision align and how i fit into your vision how you fit into mine how we can together bring out the goodness that god has put inside us um, by the grace of God, my husband knows how to clearly state his purpose. I mean, I feel like in the course of our relationship, I probably would have asked him that question more than five times. Yes, that's how I am. I, I keep asking. Play. Sorry, I'm asking again because play, I want to be sure. What is your purpose in this life? Where are you going? What has God asked you to do? Is there any new thing that God has added? Is there any old thing? You know, um, by the grace of God, every time I asked him, he was clearly and distinctly able to define his purpose. And that's one of the reasons why I was like, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so the next one is, um, so this is a bit personal and I'll explain why. So the next one is a man that is not too busy to spend time with me. Yes 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 so my love language if you don't know is quality time it's one of my love languages but i feel like it's my probably my major love language and i did not know this until like i started getting into relationship and i started realizing that ah okay so i actually like quality time because i used to think that my major love language was words of affirmation it's one of my love languages yeah but it's not the major one it's quality time in fact i used to talk with my um fiance now husband and i'll tell him that ah what's his quality quality time my own is quantity time because he gives quality time but me i still want more but it's not enough it's not enough Child. give me more time and i really want it because i understand that okay uh as a man at the head of the family you're busy you're this you're that but i don't want you to be too busy to spend time with me i don't want you to be too busy to grow our relationship or to invest in our relationship rather so i that was one of my like my major like one of the things that i was majorly looking out for that like, are you too busy for me because if we have not even gotten married you are forming busy it means i don't get married like i will not be seeing your face but i'll not be seeing the air behind you as you are passing and i did not want that i did not want a relationship where we are both busy don't get me wrong there's a place of being an individual there's a place of working to achieve you know your individual purposes and then your collective purposes building yourself but I also wanted that quality time, spending time together as a couple, and by the grace of God. I know I keep saying by the grace of God because I cannot believe that this man is mine. I feel like it's the grace of the Lord Almighty. And by God's grace, um, he's very, very able to give me time. He's very, very wise and knows how to create time for me. And even if he can't give me time, he's able to communicate it that, okay, babe, I have to do this now. Well, call you at this time or we'll talk at this time like ah oh, yes let's give him that tick inside like that box <laughs> so the next one is a man that is good with children and knows how to have fun i mean i cannot marry a man that when he sees children is going in the other direction i'm like sure <laughs> please no you know like be able to bring out that childlike quality in you be able to connect with children and also be able to have fun as a person you know me guys i'm not really the fun person it's not because i'm not fun but my personality like i'm kind of like an introvert if you know <laughs> and my personality doesn't really allow me to be as fun as i would want to be in my head so I would like somebody who is fun to trigger me and bring out that liveliness in me because trust me, I am loads of fun only if I'm with the right people and he is the right person because he is fun and he's able to, you know, stir me up in a good way so that we can have fun together. <laughs> That's enough with that, okay? You get it? You understand it. If you don't get it, <laughs> 
So the last one, which is also personal, is a musically inclined man. And the reason why I put that as the last one was because um, over time I started realizing how much I love, 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 how much I love music. And I knew that I would want to be able to discuss music with my spouse. Yeah. And funny enough, um, I think I would say I love Christian music. Yeah, I think I'll put it like that to be more specific because I hardly listen to non-Christian music. And it's there's a reason for it. It's a very, very personal reason. I'll share it in another video. If you guys want me to talk about it, just put it in the comment section and I would share it in not my next video, but I'll share it sometime in the future why. I try not to listen to non-Christian music, so most of the music I listen to is Christian music, and I love, 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 love Christian music. I love listening. Like I could bury myself in Christian music all day and just keep listening. And I wanted someone that we can talk about music together because I feel like I have a good musical ear, but I just did not develop it well enough. And yeah, at this stage, I feel like, man, I'm too busy to develop it. So I would love someone who knows a little something about music and we can just have a chat about it, you know, do music together, just have fun, worship together, praise God together and all of those things. And by the grace of God, now, if you don't know, you're going to know now. <laughs> I realized that I did not introduce my husband in my last video, pardon me, forgive me. The next time he comes, he's going to properly introduce himself, okay? And uh, so my husband is actually a music producer, a composer, a music writer, eh, it's a music writer, you see? That's why I say he's coming and so himself, he's a songwriter among other things and his youtube channel which i should have put in my last video is at official for one and i'll just put it up here so that you guys can check him out on youtube and see how god has blessed me with a man that is not only musically inclined but his music himself praise the lord somebody oh sorry the wrong hand Praise the Lord. I don't know arrange it for me to meet guys with it. Let me set it. We need Uber to set it, Dada. Let's set it. Hey, hey. Are you ready to praise God? Are you ready? Praise the Lord, somebody. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> okay, guys. So, yes, funny enough, my points were seven. Yeah, seven is one of the numbers that I love. Maybe because it's a perfect number, as they say. So, I had seven points and out of the seven well my husband checked six if you want to know which six just go back out watch it again but he actually checked six of the seven and the last one was not really a deal breaker for me which is why i was still able to say you know what let's do marriage together this is going to be fun this is going to be purposeful it's going to be delightful which it is which it is trust me we are enjoying it yeah it's it's beautiful it's lovely Aww. i'm sure somebody wants me to stop talking right now <laughs> <laughs> okay so like i started with i said something about tall dark and handsome prince charming i felt like um that image was actually put in my head based on the things that i was seeing but if you notice it was not on my list it wasn't part of the things i'd written down because i this list i feel like i wrote it under the direction of the holy spirit and also like my personality like what i want as a person and if you notice there was no what well, he has to be tall, he has to be dark, he has to be handsome or something. Not that my husband is not one of those things, but <laughs> let's, let's not go to it. <laughs> but yeah, um and uh I'm gonna be very vulnerable now, I'll just share something with you guys. So this is for the people who stay to the end, they're gonna listen to this part. I'm gonna be very, very vulnerable with you guys, and it's gonna be there was a part there was a time in my life I had a very, very close friend and she once said something, she said oh uh, she can't marry a man that is not like she had a height level let's say for example she's five foot two inches and maybe she's like the man has to be at least five foot five inches now this is just me giving a number and i did not understand i was like why and she was like well because she's like five foot two uh -huh. and she obviously wants someone who is taller than her and i'm like okay. okay but i did not know that that word that she said actually there was a seed that was sown in my heart like oh miss i want a tall man i didn't know i didn't say it out i didn't even think of it but it was sown in my heart and when my husband and i started becoming serious in our relationship uh one of the things i struggled with was the fact that well 
it's not that I'm blessed with height. <laughs> it's taller than me. I used to yag me like I'm short and everything, but like if I was going to look at relatively like oh what is tall and what is short, I would say like he's not that tall. You know what I mean? Apart to we have this. I started feeling very insecure about it. Like okay, um, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not sure again. I'm not sure. And the Holy Spirit started convicting me, like, okay, so is it the physical feature that you are looking out for? Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. If you get a tall, like, extra tall guy to marry, please, by all means, enjoy your marriage. But at the end of the day, I just started realizing that as an individual, that's not what I truly desire in a man. The things I truly desire in a man are these seven things that I've just mentioned. And if you look at it, my husband actually, uh uh, he's, oh, no. <laughs> he's plenty. And um, this is just me trying to share this to, I don't know if I'm talking to someone right now, but I just feel like maybe there's someone out there who has this image of what they want in a man. Or maybe some people say, oh, he must have money. That's another one that he should have like this amount in his bank account or he should be your third or last son before you can marry him. I don't know if he does. I think he does it. And everything. But what I'm trying to say is that those things can go like that. What would truly stay is the character of the person. So if you're trying to make a list, I would say let it be more of the person than the physical because the physical can change, the physical can fade. But what we truly stand is like the spirit of the person, the character, the soul of the person, the mind of the person. How does he think? How does he act? How does he, you know, talk and all of those things? So I'll just end this by saying that don't let your speck put speck in your eye that will blind you from seeing your spouse. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed my video and more to come more to come just stay tuned this channel is taking a new turn and we are moving higher we're going places and um be a part of this family subscribe like share invite others to be a part of this family if you enjoy this video if this video blessed you in any way please share this video okay my uh analytics is showing me that about 66 percent of you who watch my video haven't subscribed yet please subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video i love you and bye, -bye.